English Across the Pond. Hi, I'm Jennifer, your co-host and American English teacher. And I'm Dan, your other co-host and British English teacher. And this is English Across the Pond. We are both native speakers and have been teaching a combined total of over 20 years all over the world. Our mission is to help English learners build confidence and fluency for natural, real conversations. We love showing you how to naturally use idioms and expressions, phrasal verbs, vocabulary and grammar, while also helping you practice American and British English differences. After every episode, you too will have new vocab and ideas to have your own conversations and finally start using English. Want to start practicing today? Head over to our website and learn how you can join our Telegram community, daily group speaking classes, and download more of our learning materials and resources. You can do all that at www.englishacrossthepond.com. Now let's find out what today's conversation is all about. Hello, hello, welcome aboard. Hello, everybody. It's another Friday, another beautiful Friday, another beautiful time with English Across the Pond. Hi, Jennifer, what's going on in America land? Hello. What's hello, going on, hello, dude? Hello, hello. Nothing much, just sitting here drinking my ginger, my ginger water and uh, enjoying my afternoon, my morning. And I'm eating my natto cheese flavour tortilla chips. I won't eat them during the recording because that would be rather rude. I know, I can already hear the, uh, the yeah, nobody crinkle wants to... of the bag. We are talking about food today, but nobody wants to hear somebody eating in a podcast. That would be unsavoury. And you did, before we started the, the, the recording, show me the bag. But can you read me exactly what the bag says? Yeah. Nacho cheese flavor tortilla chips. Chips! That's what I was going to say. It doesn't say crisps. <laughs> True. Because they're nacho, nacho chips. It only works for nachos, I think. Normally, we have a, a packet of crisps. You, um, when you say, I, th I think you actually mean nacho instead of nacho, but, you know. Ooh. So when you say, Crikey. when you say nacho I don't say it, chips, no. No. is it, to me, nachos are like a cheese on top of a tortilla chip. But is a nacho chip to you the same as a tortilla chip is? Or is a nacho chip just the flavoring? Well, it says nacho cheese flavor. Not, however you say it, nacho, 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 nacho cheese flavor. Tortilla chips. Tortilla. Interesting. <laughs> tortilla actually, chip. I should never, this is actually a minefield. Nacho cheese flavor tortilla chips. <laughs> Sorry. I'll put them down. Or else we'll just we'll have a whole episode that should just be called the title of my crisps, chips. Uh, yeah. What I want to know I is feel like, like it's be <laughs> we're not even talking about this today. But like in England, in England land, we have like French fries, which are mini little like stick chips, and then we have like chips, chips, which are like chunky chips, uh, homemade chips. Uh -huh fish and chip shop chips so what in america do you call like chunky chips because they're not french fries i mean excuse me excuse me no those are french fries oh, what oh, um, the little also, stick things but they'll oh come on stick things are french fries i mean all basically like <sighs> those deep fried soft potatoes are french fries <sighs> but we call those i think they're steak uh, steak chips cut chips fries oh steak cut fries which are like just a little bit thicker oh but we can have them in the uk like as thick as your wrist <laughs> oh wow i feel like that would be a, a baked potato but <laughs> yeah. hey deep fried their own. <laughs> deep fried potato yeah now yeah. we are talking about like differences tomato potato but what i want to know is when you guys yes, over yes. there in Oregon and Ohio, when you think of an English plate of food, a traditional, very English, what do English people eat? What do you think we eat? 
I can't help but thinking of the song when you said tomato and potato. Oh, yeah. Do you know the tomato and potato song? Tomato, potato. No. You say tomato. Ah. I say tomato. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. When you say potato, I say potato. Potato, potato. <laughs> potato, potato. Okay. Yeah. Good. I like it. I was moving my hips. I know. I like I liked the, the beat. Thanks. Okay, I'm coming to your house, to the Methvin household for some dinner. Yeah. And uh, you are working hard on making a very British English plate of food. So we are going to have, well, if we were going out to the pub, we'd probably have fish and chips, but the vegan version for us, of course. At home, you'd probably make some kind of roast oh. with a potatoes, potatoes, yeah. and like collard greens or something. <laughs> collard greens. We don't have them. <laughs> oh, then some carrots. kind of like vegetable. Yeah. Uh, peas, carrots, cauliflower, broccoli. Okay, those are like the, the UK staples. Well, I think on a traditional Sunday dinner, you'd have maybe broccoli's maybe a bit avant garde, maybe, but Ooh. definitely carrots, definitely peas. Col I love cauliflower, and I could just eat a cauliflower on its own. Never mind roasting it, just boil it for a bit. I know. Oh, love cauliflower with pepper you on. You do love it. Cauliflower with pepper. I have one. I have a cauliflower in my in my produce drawer right now. That's probably like three days old that I really need to cook produce drawer maybe you inspired me today yeah like in the refrigerator you know there's like oh, a drawer see. at the bottom yeah, yeah. the uh, salad crisper yeah um yeah. so you guys well, i come to yours and we're going to go out to like uh the coach lights the barney's steakhouse barney's big steaks i imagine that's where we'd go and Good evening, can I? And there'd be like a waitress there with a little flip pad, you know, a little notepad. Make it, it, make it Betty. I want, I want Betty to be our waitress. Okay. Hey, Betty. Hi. Good evening. How are you guys? <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you. Oh, are you British? No. Yes. <laughs> oh, John, we got a British guy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I imagine that we would, the, whatever, <laughs> there'd be lots of uh, steak chips and uh, maybe a salad bar where we could fill up and eat like one yeah. huge portion before we started. Then we'd have another enormous, I'm thinking just portion size to be honest. And then we finish off with an all you can eat like ice cream and candy store thing. And I go in, when I leave, I have to go through the door sideways because I've eaten so much. Yes, that <laughs> sounds about right. But that sounds more like uh, you were kind of describing to me what like, a typical like buffet set is yeah like a buffet which as you were describing those i used to go to buffets when i was like younger yeah and like i loved the basically endless soft serve ice cream that we could get oh yeah yeah, yeah. so good god my parents just really let me eat whatever i wanted we, I used to go to those kind of places when I lived in Bangkok. Uh, there were those kind of like very, um, I mean, they are actually like obviously American, a chain. And um, yeah, that's where I sort of like get used to sort of like how things are stateside. Because we don't have them here so much. We have like, obviously your fast food joints, but not really your steak restaurants, not maybe outside of London. So I am familiar with the kind of like setup. See, I dropped a D in there to make it American. Set up. I, it was so natural, <laughs> I almost didn't even recognize it. Woof. Um, yeah, so basically, I think that UK people generally are just kind of flabbergasted, amazed, taken aback, shocked by the portion size. But also, I think there's the cliche as well of the over-friendly serving waiting staff. Um, they're both perhaps well, that's cliches. They're make they're making a living on those tips. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I would actually give more money if someone just left me up. Maybe should say that at the start. Good evening, madam. I'm from Britain. You will earn more money if you don't talk to me. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. If I got someone, if that, yeah, that's easy money right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I'll double. I say if you don't be really polite, I will double any tip I would have 
given. There is a place downtown San Diego that is actually known for rude service called Dick's Last Resort. And they do that as kind of like marketing. That's like their thing. It's like poor service. Oh, I like that. But I did have to ask them to be a little bit more rude one yeah. time. I was like, you know, you're... Come on. Crank it up. They should just get some Scottish stuff. Root it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Root it up. Okay, so we are actually here, before we run out of time, to talk about US-UK food pronunciation differences. Tomato. <laughs> Tomato. Potato. Which is actually the opposite of... Yeah, we're going the wrong way around. <laughs> I like... Can you do... Okay, I'll do my best tomato and potato, and in between you do your best, best British tomato and potato. Here we go. Tomato. Tomato. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I know it's not... It should be potato. 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 Wrong. It's not potato because that syllable is the one with the accent on it. Sorry. So if Sorry. there's a T, even if a T is between two vowel sounds, potato. if it's the accented, <laughs> if it's the accented uh, syllable, then it is still a T. Potato. Potato. <laughs> potato. I did just have a very big belly laugh. Um, <laughs> so go on then, say potato, potato in your best British crisp. Oh. British. Potato. <laughs> <laughs> potato potato <laughs> yeah avocado no potato 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 P potato right we've got some more steak and potatoes <laughs> wait so how do you say it naturally in british english <sighs> i can't now hold on i'm going to that special potato. place potato Potato. No. Potato. A a potato. Potato. <laughs> yeah. So is it the same? Yeah. Potato no, not the same. Because you say like potato. Potato. So not potato. exactly the same. No. So now. Say, okay, I'm gonna say it, and then you say it. potato. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but do some do some <laughs> Very do good. some English places. <laughs> Some English cities say potato. No. Potato. No. <laughs> Nowhere in the UK says potato. No. Sorry. Mm, I'm calling your bluff. I'm like. Eh. Well, you'll have to come. You have to come and drive around from state to state. A, Excuse a me. Do any of you tour. guys say potato? You could have it on a loud hailer out of your car, so you don't have to get out. A uh, bullhorn. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What'd you call it? Loud hailer. Bullhorn. Bullcrap. Hailer. H a l e r. H a i l. H l. Hail to hail. Hail a cab. Now, excuse me. Interesting. What the hell is going on with the Italian rice dish? Risotto. <laughs> Yum. Yes. Yes, I agree. What's your favourite kind of risotto? basil risotto <laughs> or with other kind of her herbs i like oregano with a fillet <laughs> oregano <laughs> with a fillet now risotto risotto yeah i, d I actually oh, think that you say it better than us actually i don't really like the way we say risotto it's risotto. very it's very like risotto. a like we say it a bit like a serial killer would say it risotto risotto I prefer risotto. And actually, I like a risotto. pea and asparagus. Oof, with a squeeze of lemon. Oh, thank you, Italy. Ooh, risotto with asparagus. Yeah. That is delicious. I love asparagus. Are you? Can you make so, risotto? Risotto. Uh, my husband can better. Oh, he's a I think sometimes I accidentally make risotto when I overcook regular rice <laughs> or put too much water in. Sorry. So I accidentally make risotto a lot. <laughs> sorry, our Italian listeners. <laughs> Monica. Monica's I'm just sorry. crashed her car. <laughs> 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 She's deployed her airbags. <laughs> sorry. 
Yeah, the whole of Milan is just all smashed in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we say risotto. You say risotto. Risotto. I think the grass is always greener on the other side because I kind of prefer risotto. <laughs> I'm going to go to a, a Italian restaurant and be like, hi, I would like a little bit of the risotto. I wonder how the Italians say it. asparagus. Monica's going to have to tell us. Risotto. I imagine. Uh, Valentina is also on Telegram. She could tell us. I'm waving my arms about and saying, Rosato. But I don't know. Yeah, that's, I feel like, stereotypical. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Stereotypes. <laughs> Probably is, though. <laughs> like, Rizzato. um, I actually, re- I won't say what it was, but I recently explained a really, really bad stereotype to someone about their country. And I said, you know, this is what everyone perceives it as, but what is it really like? And they said, no, it is like that. <laughs> <For God>. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. okay, fair enough. Now then, we... I want to ask you, yeah. mm. oh. because yeah. while you were describing and spelling hailer, hailer to yeah. me, you said an, an H. Hailer. Yeah. Spell that. H-A-I-L-E-R. Hailer. Oh, okay. So I heard I heard H instead of H. Oh, maybe I did say that. You, me. If I did say that, that's wrong. You shouldn't say that. There is no H in uh, H. You know, if you are following the rules. I maybe okay. did say H. But there is a there is a herbs in herbs. Yeah, and that like I mean you know that to me. Confusing. Listeners. British people say herbs, as in, you know, Italian herbs. And Americans say, Jennifer? Herbs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, knew what, I knew you were going to say. I knew you were going to say that, and it's still funny. Why, know, do, you, why do you do that? I ju- we just, do we just sort of like, you know what, F that H? Just scramble it up and just throw it out. It's can't like, be not bothered. necessary. Yeah. Okay. We cut out the H when we when we shorten like her and him. So we're like, let's just fuck it. Let's just do it with all of them. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse my French. Yeah. Good. <sighs> Maybe in the future you won't even say like, you'll say like, hotel. I'm feeling Which, happy. Why do you think you take a hoe to a hotel? <laughs> ah, is that where that's from? <laughs> I don't know. That's I'm just singing some some rap. <laughs> herbs herbs and herbs. we have types of herbs we say basil we say oregano and we say basil and oregano yeah i like oregano so, i like that oregano i like oregano better but uh, b- oregano oregano okay yeah basil i can take it or leave it i don't mind but i, I would um uh, basil Oregano, I like. It's kind of classy. It's got a nice sound basil. to it. Isn't Basil like the name of a sidekick in a movie? I don't know if I'm thinking like Austin Powers. Basil. Yes, I think ooh, it is ooh. actually. Yes. Basil. It's like a Q uh, in um, in the Bond movies. I think you're right. Yeah. Austin like Powers, that. Basil actor. Do, are there any Americans called Basil? I mean, yeah. There's also Americans called Apple and. <laughs> oh, oh, that's peach. true. Yeah, sunshine. Mm-hmm. But Basil is actually a, a man's first name here. Oh. Yeah, it's maybe a... I'll keep that in mind for future babes. Yeah, yeah, but then you should have called your firstborn like. Mm, well. Oh, saffron. I, yeah. Saffron's a name. Saffron is a name. So, basil, Americans have the A, basil. Yeah. British, of course, keep it basil. Um, oregano, oregano. So, different placement of the stress in that one. Yeah. Uh, we were having a, a little laugh before we hit record. Yeah. About the creamy... Typically made with some kind of dairy, although thank goodness there are coconut and almond milk and cashew nut alternatives. Shall I go first? Yeah. Yogurt. (laughs) 
yogurt. Mm. Yeah. Yogurt. Give me the yogurt. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> that we... If you came to my house, you know, you said earlier, you know, I come to your house, you would be greeted initially by the butler. <laughs> whose name is Oregano. Oregano, I believe that's the door. It's our American guests. Show them in, please. And yeah, um, he would say... Give them the yogurt. Yes. Oregano. Am I saying that correctly? Yogurt? Yeah, with an R, uh, yeah. Uh, yogurt. Yogurt. I wonder who the first person what was. The... Because it was probably, I don't know if this is true, it's not necessarily true, we could do the research, but I wonder, let's say yogurt was first, or you know, whichever one came first in the history of language, I wonder who the first person was to call it the other one, and what stairs they must have got around the dinner table. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, Let's say like he says it. And he just caught on. Oh, no, that's just Basel up to his tricks again. He yeah. doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Yogurt. Yogurt. Bizarre. Yogurt. Because it's an O. Yo. Yogurt. Yeah, but you can't. It also, Y-O-G spells yog. Like jog. Yeah. Touche, my friend. You know. Two. Shit. There's always two sides to that yogurt coin, and we've also yogurt, got like, did yeah. we do f fillet? Fillet's terrible, isn't it? It's from French. F fil fillet. 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 Yeah, sounds much we better. We definitely say fillet. It sounds better, doesn't it? A fillet. Fillet of fish. Ah, uh, yeah. In McDonald's, actually, we have fillet of fish. And you say fillet of fish. Well, I d I think because the way that it's written. I fillet o fish sounds funny. <laughs> but is our hold on? I think ours might be double L as well. Yeah, it is. In English, it's double L, so you're kind of forced into the fillet. Whereas I think if you put it with just one L, you're more likely to say like fillet, fillet o fish. Fillet o fish sounds so glamorous, and then we bring you a really like crappy bun with just a square of fried fish in the middle. It's a bit of an anticlimax. Yeah. Like, you Not. imagine filet of fish to be something quite posh. Yeah. But it's not in McDonald's. I'm the just looking at a picture of McDonald's. one. It hasn't even got any lettuce I in it, for it God's sake. It's got cheese in it. I know. Fish and cheese. some, like, white cream sauce. Tartar. Like cream of tartar. Yeah. Which is a tartar sauce. Tartar. Tada. Tada. Tada sauce. Cream of... Is it cream of tartar? Cream of tartar? Yeah. I actually don't know. I think I always just say it in a weird way every time. Oh. Like cream of tartar, tartar. <laughs> it's kind of like the Worcestershire. It's like, I'll get the Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. And then because I've made it into like a thing, people just go like, ah, and we just keep on going. <laughs> but that like, is a really... The actual pronunciation. Yeah, that is a really good way if you're not sure how to pronounce something is make it 10 times worse than it. And everyone thinks, oh, Jennifer, she's <laughs> so funny. She says, I'm what's like, the sister the cream of tartar, 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 tartar. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, out there in English learning land, which one do you say, my friends? Do you say risotto? Or do you say risotto? Um, which side of the fence do you reside on? Do you s not sit on, because you sit on the fence. Which side of the fence are you on? What's the most common way to say it in your language? Do you say yogurt or yogurt? I bet you, you know, most people probably say it your way. <sighs> Then we have our, our UK British English fans, you know, like Bruno, who's like, British English or bust. Yeah. Got to respect so, him. So, yeah, we do. Yeah. And we're going to get plenty, plenty o practice, like <laughs> filet o fish, plenty o practice <laughs> yeah. in the Telegram group. So, yeah. meet us there. And this has been a lot, a lot o fun. <laughs> Sorry. A, a lot o fun. <laughs> Yeah, good. 
we've reinvented the thanks language. Thanks for learning with us. Yeah, thanks for learning with us. And enjoy your risotto wherever you are. Yes. Don't forget your herbs. <laughs> yeah, don't forget your herbs or potato. I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back. This is The Language Focus, the part of the podcast where we take a closer look at some of the vocabulary from this week's chat. What you're going to hear is part of a longer conversation, over 10 minutes, that is available to our members. If you'd like to hear the full conversation, head over to englishacrossthepond.com slash membership to find out more. Difficult this language, isn't it? English is tough, but hey, that's why we're here. Yeah. We're to here uh, provide support and encouragement. Mm-hmm. I'm two sides to the. I love it. Okay, I'll stop with the pronunciation. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to start uh, with to catch on. Uh, and bizarrely, if you look up the word catch and look up the word on, a phrasal verb, you could never guess the meaning. Yeah. If something catches on, is catching on, has caught on, um, it's becoming more popular. Normally, like a hobby or something that you can do, some music, a fashion. And, uh, you know, Jennifer, I've been noticing uh, recently, iPhones are really catching on, yeah? I think iPhones caught on <laughs> ages ago, right? Not where, not in my neck of the woods. <laughs> They're bright. I'm the only one with one in my. I'm the only one with an iPhone in my village. No, I'm no. joking. I'm okay, joking. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. joking. When you called it a village, I knew you were just being silly. <laughs> yeah. So to catch on in my town, uh, bright green trousers are really catching on at the moment. Oh, yeah. fancy pants. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to actually think what is catching on at the moment. I, I'm, I don't know actually, but anyway, it's to become popular, fashion, nice. trends, uh, and hobbies, things like that. Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. To each their own. Yeah. To each their own. Mm. Uh, usually used after you say something. Right. So, like, if we're having a conversation. Well, the definition first, right? Used to say that other people are free to like different things or even think different things. So if you say like, oh my gosh, cats are the worst creature on the planet. Huh? I'm like, Pfft. I know you'd never say that because no. of Sylvia. Yeah. I know. Okay, I'm not going to use you as an Let's say Johnny Dog Pants says, oh, cats are the worst creature. I'd be like, Cats are actually the best creature on the planet, but to each their own. Johnny, so it can be used Johnny. with like a but, but, you know, like I'm going to say something that disagrees with you, but, well, but to each their own. Or you can just say it as an expression after you hear contradicting um, ideas or interests to each their own. And it just saying like, you know, people can think different things. You do you, I do me, you do you, he does he, you know? Yeah. People are free to think and do what they want. I'm free to do what <laughs> I want. Yeah. Any old time. I haven't really recovered from what Johnny Dog Pants said. <laughs> <laughs> no, Johnny Dog Pants is an idiot. Yeah. Shame on you, Dog Pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I tried to concentrate, but I was just picturing... Johnny Dog Pants. I know. My next one is Touche, which my podcast partner Jennifer likes to say. I like to say it as well, actually. And it comes from, there's quite a lot of, there's quite a big backstory here. So, you know, get comfortable. Touche comes from the sport of fencing. What is fencing? Well, lucky for you, I've just Googled it. Fencing is an organised sport involving the use of a sword, epée, foil or sabre, mm. for attack and defence according to set movements and rules. Apparently, Jennifer, mm. it can be enjoyed by people of any age and offers a multitude of benefits. 
I, I think I'm at fencing.com. They're promoting themselves. But fencing is that, that weird sport where they're all dressed. It's weird, isn't it? Dressed all in it white, sort of like strange face mask on, and they moving forwards, shuffling backwards and forwards like a crab, trying to poke each other in the tummy. Mm-hmm. There must be yeah. better. There must be better ways to spend your time. You know, sorry, fencing fans. Um, yeah. When you actually make contact and the right part, you press someone with your sword in their belly button. That is touche. It means you know you've done it right. You know you've scored a point. Touche. But for the non-fencing people in this world, we say touche when somebody in a conversation says something.